Durability is the ability of something to withstand wear, pressure, or damage. Many of our past tests subjected 3D printed parts to extreme levels of impact, torque, or heat over a short duration. These tests do not always tell the whole story. When I'm making parts for robots, drones, wearables, or really anything that may shake, rattle, or roll, I need to consider how my materials will perform. What happens when a 3D print is repeatedly exposed to wear and tear over time? How durable are additive manufactured plastics? I'm Greg Pauls from Zometry, and I love testing out 3D printed materials in different engineering challenges. Today, we will look at over a dozen different materials built with six unique additive manufacturing platforms. This durability test will have parts go head to head, bumping and slamming inside a cement mixer. Are they going to break, bend, snap, or survive? Will it tumble? Let's find out. Today we will evaluate the following materials. Three FDM 3D prints from our Stratasys Fortis machines, ABS M30, PC, and Ultim 9085. Two industrial grade polymers from Carbon DLS, the Tough Epoxy EPX82, and a rigid polyurethane, RPU70. One Stratasys Polyjet part made with Vero Black Plus, Two more photopolymers made using SLA, Accurate Extreme Gray, and Clearview, the Clearview with a quick clear finish. One SLS part made with Fuse Nylon 12. And finally, we have five HP Multijet Fusion options, Nylon 11, Nylon 12, Glassville Nylon 12, Polypropylene, and a Nylon 12 with a Vapor Smooth finish. I'm wondering how the materials and finishes will play out during the challenge. So let's put on our safety glasses and get started. I'll start with a simple run of a minute or less to see the initial damage and then we'll increase that duration. Whenever there are two parts severely damaged, I'll take them out and consolidate the remaining pieces. All right, so, I just ran up for a minute. This was a lot more violent than I expected. I gotta admit here. Because even some of these materials so far, so I have the FDM. I have some breakage here already on this extended lip uh, with our ABS and our polycarbonates lost some features here. Polyjet or the lack thereof. So both polyjet and our accurate clear view materials. Again, powerful for prototyping, uh, but you can see here, they just can't take those drops. We also have some SLA uh, Extreme here. So again, that SLA material, just like that clear view, it may not survive. Uh, it's hanging onto the SLS nylon, which looks actually pretty good. Some chips on the edges here, uh, but still, I'm, I'm gonna figure out if I need to consolidate these, but I wanna keep the SLS in the game here. Uh, Multi-Jet Fusion, holding up pretty well. The polished uh, piece and the uh, regular nylon 12. Um, so far, so good. So doing great here. Now this is interesting because we talk about durability here. Glass bead, uh, actually a little bit chippy. And, and I'm actually thinking that maybe I'm going to take this glass bead off and consolidate the Nylon 11 with our SLS Nylon. Ultim, high performance FDM. It's living it. It's living it. It actually looks pretty good. Uh, relatively untouched. And believe me, it is a tough material. Also, multi-jet fusion polypropylene here. Uh, much more flexible material, but you see I lost a lip here and that thin wall is starting to show through with a little hole. And carbon DLS, well first off, it's kind of loosening itself up. That's another story, but look at the look at the cosmetic damage. But overall, actually, it's holding. Now that epoxy seen better days with some broken broken pieces here and here. Uh, but I'm gonna tighten it up. I'm gonna throw them back in and see what happens here. Okay, so I'm pretty sure the phrase for this durability test is brutal. Uh, I think next time maybe I line this whole thing with rubber uh, to give these parts a little bit more of a chance. I was expecting running this for like 20 odd minutes and we are just now three minutes in. Again, in one, the first minute we already dropped several of these materials and now, oh, oh dear. Uh, look at that though, RPU actually hanging in all right uh, on it. You got some lattice breakage, breakage the smallest and well features, as well as the lip over here are gone. EPX, which is a stiffer material, and again, a tough material, uh, I, it just uh, it didn't last as long as RPU here, obviously, so that guy's retired. All right, so let's take a look though. 
Uh, Vapor Spoon to Dialogue 12. Uh, it's held in, uh, has lost its lip up here, but overall looks pretty good. And actually, the uh, Nylon 12 regular, again, they lost their lip, uh, looks to be a common amongst all these 3D prints here. Uh, but hanging in pretty strong otherwise. So Nylon 11, hanging in here. And, you know, wink and a smile, I actually used to build dug ductile ruggedized components out of Nylon 11 for a reason, because it is a very ductile material. Nylon 12, our SLS, fully lost its lip, just like those other multi uh, fusion materials. Uh, but they are, uh, but yeah, it's held together pretty well here. And let's look at the FDM. So FDM, ABS, and polycarbonate. They actually have given a pretty strong run. Look at this guy, it's just quite hanging on here. Called the Tooth Fairy. Uh, so we have a, we have uh, ABS here too. It's lost some of those thin lattice features, lost that lip. Wait a second, guys. I just finished my commentary being like, I swear there was more. There's always more. So we have multi-step fusion polypropylene. Thin wall features and lattices have broken off. In fact, actually this whole area here is, is snapped through. Uh, but you know who's hanging strong? Ultim. Ultim is our highest performance FDM material. I wouldn't expect any less of this. So actually I think Ultim is gonna be paired with that RPU. We're gonna keep that into the game as well. Okay, so we a lot of parts did not make it. We're at that three minute mark uh, during this test here. So let's talk about what happened. All I can say is, wow, this was a test about durability. And I promise you, I didn't think I was going to smash and destroy every single material that we're putting into the test here, especially within a 10 minute time period. So it was very exciting for me as well to watch this happen in real, uh, real time. Within a minute, we lost our photopolymers. So those Acura materials, as well as our polyjet material, um, we even retired here uh, our glass fill nylon. Something you may not uh, think about a lot is when you add a filler to any material, it increases the stiffness, but in turn, you actually lose ductility. So that bend before break aspect of a ductile piece, like uh, some of these nylons here that survived, wasn't there. So you started getting eggshell-like cracks, especially on those thin wall features, and they propagated along some of these features here. It probably could survive a little bit longer, but because I had three already failed, I wanted to consolidate so some more parts uh, were able to go through that test. Uh, our epoxy material within three minutes here just really started to disintegrate here. Uh, polypropylene, you can see the thin raw features really started to lacerate up and create a little tear. And it's a great material, great chemical resistance, great performance, uh, but the strength isn't the same as some of these ma other materials like these nylons on this side. Our FDM materials, as I noted, Ultim, top performer here. In fact, actually it's the only one that all the features remain on, on our parts here. That being said, not the same case for things like ABS and polycarbonate. Uh, you can see some nice delamination going on in those thin wall features, as well as a lot of features missing. In fact, the actual thin wall test here on these verticals uh, on polycarbonate, you just have one left in the center here. Uh, you still have those retained on ABS, but you lost most of your lattice. These nylons, I'm gonna group them all together because they all behave very similar to each other. Um, I actually thought nylon 11, I was surprised to see some of those features break off because nylon 11 tends to be the most ductile out of this grouping. Uh, but overall, like it had most feature retentions there. Uh, you can see that nylon 12, unpolished versus polished. The polished had a little bit better performance on those thin walls, uh, but both did lose their lips. And then the SLS nylon, one of our most common materials that we have, we lost a lot of some of those thin features as well as the lip feature, but otherwise the thin wall areas here actually did, did survive. This is a really interesting test and at home, you may not actually be able to demonstrate this many to, uh, different uh, tests among this many industrial 3D printing materials. So I hope you learned something. I definitely did about this process. And uh, it just goes to show that materials really do matter, especially when you think about what application your part's going to be, be in. So if it's going to be to ruggedized housing, maybe you're gonna be living on the materials on this side. If you're looking for more cosmetics or rapid prototyping or fit checks, uh, some of these materials are just as appropriate. Thanks again for checking out this Zometry Engineering Challenge. Let us know in the comments what else you'd like to see us test. We have over a dozen different manufacturing processes that instantly price online at zometry.com. If you want to learn more about 3D printing, you could go to Zometry's resources page 
for more videos, capabilities, and free design guides.